Fire. Kirsty Hill reports. Thousands of Rabbi Schneerson's followers thronged outside his headquarters in New York today. Some of the faithful dancing as they believe their leader would soon return to be revealed as the Messiah. In Melbourne, hundreds more watched his funeral live on specially arranged satellite feeds. Such a great terror of spiritual strength and guidance for so many Jewish and non-Jewish. He was, I would think, wouldn't hesitate to say, the greatest religious leader in our time. The 92-year-old rabbi died yesterday after suffering a series of strokes in March. Sneerson is credited with rebuilding the right-wing Lubavitch movement after the Holocaust, but opposed the occupied territory being given to the Arabs, as he believed Israel belonged to the Jews. Devastating for his followers. And I don't think the world realizes what they've lost. I cannot visualize the world without Rabbi Sneerson. Some Jews will spend the next year in mourning, as yet the movement has no clear successor. Kirsty Hill, Seven Nightly News. Even in death, Rabbi Menachem Schneerson will remain an enigma, a power feared by many, a savior to others, their Messiah. <laughs> Rabbi Schneerson was the last in a 200-year-old dynasty of Hasidic rabbis. They came from the city of love, Lubavitch, in Tsarist Russia. Schneerson was educated as an engineer in Paris and Berlin. But it was the extermination of Jews and World War II that galvanized him. After the war, he joined a small group of Holocaust survivors based in Brooklyn. Forty years later, the charismatic leader had created an empire. His communications network carried his message as far as the Himalayas, his publishing house became the largest distributor of Jewish books in the world. Rabbi Menachem Schneerson was the spiritual leader to nearly 300,000 followers. The power of his message and his money made him a forceful political leader as well. He displayed incredible personal charisma, an uncanny wisdom about empire building and leadership. Most of all, to his devoted followers, he symbolized hope. The Rebbe is larger than life. We have the complete faith that, you know, that miracles happen. We believe the Rebbe can be with us physically forever and ever. The rabbi's death leaves his followers in turmoil. They believed he was their Messiah, that he would, as the Bible says, lead all Jews home to Israel, that he would bring peace and save the world from crime and suffering. Today in Israel, the followers of Rabbi Schneerson were reeling from the news of his death. It's a, a very difficult situation because everybody's very sad because we just lost someone, apparently, who was very uh, dear to us. Several hundred adherents left the country on chartered jet to attend his funeral and to ponder the unthinkable, a future without him. With a devotion to right-wing causes and a huge bankroll to back him up, the 92-year-old rabbi was a significant player in Israeli politics. Israeli officials made frequent trips to his headquarters in the Crown Heights section of Brooklyn, where they sought his blessing and implicit electoral backing. The reason was simple. His 40,000 followers here were prone to vote just the way he told them. What I knew was that the Rebbe wanted it, and that the Rebbe is an expert in such things, and that because he wanted it, it was good for the people. This blind faith blocked voting gave Schneerson impressive clout in the Israeli Knesset, to pursue a conservative sectarian agenda. Because he controlled a small but strategic number of seats, Schneerson could influence the shape of Israeli coalition governments far out of proportion to the actual voting strength of the religious community. When the left-wing Shimon Peres was close to ousting the right-wing Itzhak Shamir as prime minister in 1990, Schneerson ordered two Knesset members to change their votes and deny Peres a majority. They even went so far as to build a replica here of his home in Brooklyn, hoping to lure him to the Holy Land. But they did not succeed. Though he clearly loved this country, Rabbi Menachem Mendel Schneerson never once set foot in Israel. <laughs> For the Lubavitcher Jews, praying is a long and involved process, but never more so than today, as the very orthodox sect mourned. Rabbi Yitzhak Groner has been head of the Yeshiva College in Melbourne for 35 years. 
He came from Brooklyn, New York, where he met Rabbi Schneerson, the man his followers call the Messiah. You saw that he devoted all his attention to you, and he knew about you, and he was concerned about you. You would think that there's nothing on the person's mind that's Yechidus, only you. And, that, and you lived with that. He gave you inspiration. He gave you food for thought. He gave you encouragement, and he gave you advice, which remains with us for everlasting, for our children and, and, and generations to come. In Balaclava, the Jewish part of Melbourne, Orthodox and liberal Jews alike felt the loss. He's a great man. He's, um, everybody likes him. He did a lot of good, and I'm sh well, his death will hopefully not create a problem. Early this morning, Lubavitcher Jews poured into television studios in Melbourne and Sydney to watch as Rabbi Schneerson's body was carried through the streets of New York, the city where he'd lived since escaping from Europe and the Holocaust in World War II. <laughs> Rabbi Schneerson was the seventh Lubavitcher leader in a line that began in Russia 200 years ago. He created an empire with a $500 million bankroll and some 300,000 followers around the world. Many of those are now leaving Israel for the funeral proceedings in the United States. Although Schneerson never went to Israel, he was a staunch Zionist and had a significant effect on Israeli politics. Most of the Israelis protesting against their government's agreement with the PLO last year were doing so on his orders. Professor Bill Rubenstein is a non-Lubavitcher Jew who has written a history of Jews in Australia. He fears that Rabbi Schneerson's death could destroy the Lubavitcher movement. The leaders of these strictly orthodox dynasties are literally hereditary. The man's son succeeds him. If there's no son, there's a nephew or a son-in-law. Now, Rabbi Schneerson was quite unique in this, and he has no offspring or close relatives, and there is no obvious successor. He never designated one. Unquestionably, the movement will split. Many people will become very disillusioned with it. The fact that he is not the Messiah will rebound on, or that he is, and there's no evidence that he is, will rebound certainly on the movement itself, on its leaders. No one could prophesy, no, you don't know exactly what's going to happen. But I'm going to tell you something. You didn't know the man. I know him. I have faith that his inspiration will carry forth. There might a few be few, a few people fall on the wayside. You can't meet them all. But in, but, not, but in the long run, most of it, I could even say in the totality, except few, it'll continue. Rabbi Groner believes his leader will be resurrected. We are shattered, we are broken, but our faith keeps us going, and his memory will always be with us, and uh, we hope to see him.